Guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is about toggle synchronizer. You might ask me why are we going with the toggle synchronizer when we have a two flop synchronizer. So I will discuss that case in this video. So before going to the video, you can click that subscribe button and turn your notification on so that we can get connected. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I will respond within 24 hours. And now coming to toggle synchronizer. So in two flop synchronizer, we cannot synchronize a pulse. So that's a major drawback. We cannot synchronize a pulse from a quick clock domain to a moderate clock domain. So now let us look that case where a two flop synchronizers is unable to synchronize a pulse. So as you can see in this diagram, this is a two flop synchronizer and we have two clock domains, a clock A and clock B and input is being given at clock A domain and output we are taking from a clock B domain. Now let us consider clock A having a time period of 10, okay, clock, clock period of 10 and we are giving input as a pulse. So the input is being given as pulse to this flip flop one. So now we will get the output as a pulse, okay, the Q1 is the output of the flip flop one. Now what if we give this pulse to a clock B and the clock B is just uh, two times means uh, the time period is two times the clock A so that is frequency divided by two so as you can see over here this is a clock B of a time period if clock A is 10 clock B is of 20 time period so now the major important discussions why we came here is that a pulse cannot be synchronized as you can see in this figure when a clock will check is at the pause edges the flip-flop will check at the pause edge so as it will check here that means q1 is zero it will check here q1 is zero and the pulse is not detected so as a result the output of clock b will be what it will be a zero a pulse is not there so where did the pulse went the pulse is hidden between the pause edges as a result we cannot synchronize a pulse in a two flop synchronizer so to so to avoid this a mistake which is done by two flop synchronizer if your pulse is the major part in your design that means your whole design will not work because this pulse it will be waiting for this pulse now to avoid this we will be converting this pulse to a level to a level uh, pulse means a single clock period a level means more than single clock period that's a simple difference I hope you know that a pulse is looking like this and a level will be on turned on for more than a single clock that's the difference between a pulse so we are going to convert a pulse to a level and then use that level so that we will get a synchronized pulse so now coming to toggle synchronizer as you can see over here we had made some changes we had added an extra flop with an XOR gate and an input has been given from a mux not to directly to the flip-flop so let us look at the operations what will happen so whenever I'm just uh, explaining you directly in theoretical way then after I'll show you a timing diagram so first whenever a pulse comes we will be selecting what whenever the pulse come will be selecting one that is the inverted output so normally let's say the Q is at zero so inverted output means whenever the pulse comes we are selecting one okay we are selecting one and the inverted output will be one Q is zero okay beforehand Q is zero so as a result we will get one over here and one will be sent to the D flip flop and after that state after when the pulse comes we are converting it to a level so that is done using this flip uh, using this mux okay and this has been this level has been passed to this clock domain B so as you know we are sending a level to a clock domain B we require two, fl two flops so that we need to synchronize it because we will get the metastability output over here and that will be settling after a clock period and we will take the output 
the settled output at this B2 flip-flop and we will pass it through B3 and XOR them to get our correct pulse. So now let us look at the timing diagram for a better understanding. So this is a toggle synchronizers. We have A, B, C, D as a flops and A is controlled by clock domain A and B, C, D are controlled by clock B, clock B domain. So now we are giving the input to a mux, not flip-flop, understand? We are giving an input to a mux and the output of the mux will be taken as the input for the flop A. So now let us look at the timing diagrams. So now clock A is of a certain time period. Let's say it's 10. Clock time period is 10, okay? I'm writing it down for you. It's 10. So now we are giving the input as a pulse. So the pulse has been given as an input for the mux, okay? Whenever the pulse is high, okay? Whenever the pulse is high, the input will be, the input for the flop will be coming from this one, okay? So let us say QA is zero at initial moments. So it will travel to all this way. So zero and one will be the input for the mux. So whenever the pulse comes, it will select one as the input, one as the output, and it will be given to the flop, okay? So the output of the flop will be a level. As you can see over here, QA will be a level because once the pulse is being detected by the mux, it will never go back to zero. As you can see, first it was zero, then and when the pulse came, it started to rise. And after that, it became, the pulse became zero and the mux will select zero. At that time, QA is already one because it has been changed from zero to one. I hope you are understanding. Now this level is being passed to this synchronizer circuit. So now, as you can see, let's take a look at the clock B. In the clock B, you can see that time period is being differed. So here, if it's that is 10, this is 20. Okay, that means F by two. Okay. So now let us look at what will happen at QB and QC. As you can see over here at this posage, before this posage, a little amount of time is called as a setup time. I, I hope you know about setup time and, and hold time. And so I'm continuing this video. So in this window, our input must not change so that our output will be stable. But QA is changing in this window from zero to one. As a result, we will get a metastable condition. So let us look at the metastable condition of what we got at QB. So this will be the metastable condition from the output QB. So it will settle after a clock period. Uh, after a certain of, some amount of time, it will settle either zero to one. But for understanding, I'll settle it down for the one. Okay, from zero, I'll settle it down for one. So this one will be given to the flop C and the flop C will convert after a... F so flop C will be giving us this one output after this passage. Okay, and this will be given as an input for the for the flop D. So flop D will also give the similar input with the clock time period delay. So now as you know that we are taking the output from a synchronous, uh, we are taking the output from what? From an XOR gate. So as a result, we will be getting a pulse. You know the XOR symbol, one XOR zero is one. Zero XOR one is one. So one XOR one it is zero and zero XOR zero is zero. Okay, here it is one XOR zero, it will be one for this period and this is the pulse which has been synchronized from clock A domain to clock B domain. I hope you have understood this. You can take a screenshot or understand this later. And don't be confused that this is not a simulated output. So output might vary when you're simulating, okay? I've just given this diagrams just for understanding. 
So, so QB is metastable. It can either settle to 1 or 0. Just we are reducing the probability of having a unmetastable output. So that's the reason we are using the flops here. And to get the pulse back, we are using an XOR gate. So from XOR gate, we are getting the pulse. Okay, I hope you have understood uh, how a toggle synchronizer is being used to get a pulse synchronized where it is not possible in a two flop synchronizers we have added an extra circuitry of a mux over here an extra flop and XOR gate over here so main point over here is that we need to convert the pulse to a level so that we can get the input when the pulse has been triggered so when the pulse has been triggered we will get this so this will be passed to the flops to synchronize it and after the synchronization we will pass from to two flops so that we will be exhorting this tooth and getting our pulse back okay so first pulse to level and level to pulse over here I hope you understood this toggle synchronizers and if you have any doubts you can comment down below and if you need any topic related to this stuff you can comment down below I will make your video and all you need to do is to comment down and please do subscribe. That will help me a lot in progressing. And thanks for watching. Hope you like this video.